Allow me to start at the end of my sermon. God is going to do what God has promised. God will take what is dead and bring it back to life. God will use all of God's power, take the evils of this world, crush them in the palm of God's hand, turn them into dust, breathe back into them the very breath of God's Holy Spirit and make all things new. God will do what God has promised. This is not the beginning of my sermon, it's the end. It is where the story is headed. It's where all of our stories are headed because God is not a God of empty truths, of broken covenants, of can'ts, won'ts, shouldn'ts. God is the God who will, who can, and who does. This is where these words will end with the assurance that God will do it. He's gonna do it for you and your life going to do it for me and mine, going to do it for the whole of God's creation. You see, I have to begin with this end in mind because this world is not the end. It's not the last chapter. It's not the way things are supposed to be. I have to begin with the end because we who know the story know that where injustice strikes, God strikes back. Where death comes, life still speaks. Where lies are told, truth has something even bolder to say. We begin with the end because this world, it's more than a lump of clay, a ball of water, a planet in the sky. It is the movement of a divine love so fully expressed that even the flesh on your bones, the heart in your chest, the air in your lungs is made up of the same substance that illumines the stars in the universe. This is the word made flesh. God said, I will do a new thing and spoke into a void, and there you were. God said, I will not let nothingness have its way in this world. I will not let chaos and confusion reign. And again, God spoke, and things changed. God breathed, and what was doomed from the start was finally liberated. God spoke, and what was a lost cause, a thing destined to fail, was transformed into light and life and love. You see, this is the start of our story and this is the end, that God is a God of love, a God of power, and a God of promise. And this God will set right whatever it is that takes life and tries to make it something other than good. Hear this promise this morning, that whatever you're holding on to that feels like nothingness, that feels like the void, it will be liberated. That whatever you're experiencing that feels like chaos and confusion, it will not reign forever. And that whatever they've told you is a lost cause, a thing destined to fail, it will be transformed into light and life and love. You see, God's story is your story too. This is the day where we stand in the midst of God's story, asking the story where it is we might find ourselves. It's a day where we acknowledge the hope of Easter is on the horizon, but the truth of Good Friday is even closer. A day where we wrestle with the reality of a story that knows we are not always a faithful people because shouts of Hosanna can so quickly turn into cries of crucify him. A day when we remember that life it's not a simple story where good people are over here and bad people are over here, but one where a God of love, a man named Jesus, comes to redeem all of it regardless of our messiness. This is the story of Palm Sunday. And the Gospels tell it like this, that the people were waiting at the entrance 
to Jerusalem, throwing down their coats in praise and worship, singing in one voice, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You see, the people were waiting because they knew the story and that this story was going to change their lives. They knew the ending too, that God was going to do what God had said, that all of their suffering would be transformed into healing and that the structures around them would stop dealing death and start producing life. You know, I used to think that God's power was about smiting the bad and lifting up the good, but then I met Jesus. And I found that power looks like compassion. Power takes our helplessness and turns it into healing. I used to think God's power was about some disembodied God doing what God does to those humans who are down here on earth. But then I met Jesus and I found that power looks like flesh that weeps and sings and yearns for a better world as we all do. I used to think God's power was far away and cold and then I met Jesus and I realized the power of God is right here in in front of us, riding in in this very place where we shout for help. Beloved, God has not abandoned us, is not waiting for the right moment to make good on God's promises. No, God is in the midst of this place, is riding in as we wait. And so it is on this morning that we cry out, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. This is not some contemporary situation, beloved. 2,000 years ago, in a place called Jerusalem, the people of God stood right where we stand, in the midst of a world where power looked like Roman soldiers wielding swords, where life was about what others told you to do instead of what God created you to do, where the world said, this is all you'll ever get, so don't even think about dreaming about getting more. For these children of God, hope was no joke. Hope was no small thing, no pithy saying on the back of a car's bumper sticker or the promise of a rural billboard. No, hope was all they had, for the world was just about ready to chew them up and swallow them whole. I can't help but notice how strange this story is. How strange the story of Palm Sunday is, that the crowd shouts, blessed is the king who comes in the name of heaven, that they form a parade of sorts, that they throw down their coats as though the Jesus before them, who won't stop until the redemption comes, is the same kind of king they've read about in their fairy tale story books. But you see, this Jesus is not like earthly kings, not like the rulers of the day. Day, this king is much more divine. This king, Jesus, is one who comes and changes the story before it's even really begun. This king, Jesus, is one who refuses to let the throne of glory look like the corruption of power. This king, Jesus, is the one who says, if I'm going to enter this city, I'm going to do it in humility. Let it not be on a throne, but on a donkey. Because my power is not the world's power. My hope is not the hope they've been feeding you. And my promise is that even the mess, the lowly, the parts of this life that seem so uncleaned, not worthy of the storybook, are a part of my salvation and a part of your story too. This is not the hope of Palm Sunday, but it is the hope of Jesus. That when the palms wave and the world enters and the hope of the world enters in, this savior is a savior who not only knows our messiness, he's been there. You see, he not only knows that your life doesn't look like the storybooks, that your heart doesn't look like a perfect muscle, that your voice can easily change from praise to condemnation. He's been there. 
He's seen it all. And still, he will meet you right there. He will meet you right there in it and continue to do what saviors do. He will pull you through it. I cannot get away from this scripture. That as the crowd starts singing of the glory of the Lord, a Pharisee stops Jesus and says, Teacher, why don't you order them to stop singing? Why don't you tell them to shut up? And I love how Jesus responds. He says it like this. Even if all of these were silent, surely the rocks would cry out. Even if they couldn't, even if they wouldn't, even if you plucked all of them from out of here, the rocks would start singing, God is going to take care of us. That even in the midst of our uncertainty, even in the midst of our finitude, even in the midst of our human failure, this story is one where God will not let us fail. Look, this sermon began at the end with a reminder that God will make good on God's promises, but I think it needs to end right in the middle, right here in the places where we still find ourselves, right in the parts of the story where we stand waiting at the entrance of Jerusalem. You see, we know that Easter is on the horizon and Good Friday is even closer, and yet there is a song to sing because the end is coming, but we've still got time, because our lives are so much more important than we give ourselves or God credit for. You see, this world is crumbling. It's shattering. It's falling to pieces. You don't need a preacher to tell you that power in this world doesn't look like compassion. Power looks like coercion, lies, Power looks like force and money and co-opting whatever voices one can find to get what one wants. You don't need a prophet or a poet to tell you that Hosanna, come save us. Hosanna, come save us is not just a phrase uttered in the biblical past, but it's one cried right now as we weep, as we mourn. This is our world and this is not how it's supposed to be. And still, we stand in the middle of the story. We gather in this place and sing that there is a God who is doing a new thing. And this song is the sound of those who will not give up on a crumbling world, who will not abandon what is broken, who will not leave what is shattered. This song is the sound of voices raising in praises that sound like I will not give up on you or this place. In people shouting, there is a way out of your pain. In voices singing, our people, our family, our children of God's lives matter. God is doing what God said God would do when it looks like a compassion that refuses to bend to the powers of this world like a throne that takes what is neat and tidy and reminds us that our Jesus knows the truth of our lives look much messier it looks like we who continue to sing, even when our voices are thin, even when our voices are hoarse, and all that comes out is a whisper that says, Hosanna in the highest heaven. This Sunday, this Palm Sunday is not about waiting for Easter. It's not even about praising the God who comes when we least expect. No, this Sunday is about the story, God's story, that you are smack dab in the middle of. This story will be told because even if we stop singing, even if we can't go on, even if somebody comes up to you and tries to silence you, the rocks will cry out and remind you of what it is that you have forgotten. 
God is going to make sure this story gets told. God will do it for you. He's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for me. And he's going to do it for the whole of this world. So remember the story. Remember your promise. Remember that God's story is your story. Beloved, we have a song to sing in this place because we have the very hope of God in our lungs. So it's on this day that we sing, holy, holy, holy Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to God. Amen, amen, and amen.